Okay, so is this working? Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, this is Glenn. I'm recording from my home studio, so to speak, in Barcelona. Um, I'm a member of Top Lap Barcelona. I have been for about, well, about more, a bit more than half a year. Um, I've been doing live coding, well, more or less that time, uh, about eight months or so. I did do my first ever live coding, um, probably, I think it was 2013 with Super Collider. And um, what I'm going to be talking about today in this so-called mini workshop, which is really a workshop because there's not much interaction, but um, I'm going to be showing Bacalao. So what is Bacalao? Um, Bacalao is a set of live coding tools or the set of live coding tools that I use for myself. Um, they're built on top of Super Collider. So I, first of all, just to be clear, um, I'm sort of assuming you know yeah, that this is an, a live coding kind of audience. Um, when I say audience, I think it's probably kind of generous because I expect there's not a lot of people out there because um, at least here in Barcelona, um, it's probably the first day of our more or less not being locked down or being much less locked down than before. And it's nice weather, so I think a lot of people are probably out tomando una cerveza or um, in the cafe or just walking around and enjoying the city. But anyway, for those who are here, I, ho I know there's at least one because I've seen a message on the YouTube channel. Um, welcome and um, what was I saying about the, the audience here? So Bacalao is a set of tools that I've written in Super Collider. Yeah, I was assuming that uh, Super Collider is familiar to you, at least somewhat. Um, I know with the, the Barcelona Top Lap gang, um, probably most people, I would say, are f use Tidal Cycles for live coding. Um, some people use Foxdot. Uh, some people have experiment with Sonic Pi as well. And some people just work directly in Super Collider, which is what I would have done before as well. Um, so all those other live coding environments work with so Super Collider, as far as I know, under the hood. So the Super Collider is the uh, engine that runs the actual audio generation. And then those other languages, like for example, Tidal Cycles, is uh, generating patterns, being used as a sort of pattern controller that is very expressive and very uh, powerful. And, and then it sends messages to Super Collider to actually play the sounds. So uh, I actually did a, a workshop with, with Alex McLean last October. He was in Barcelona and it was interesting. I, I had some exposure to Tidal Cycles before, but um, having that workshop really, of course, I went a lot more in depth with it and even did some live coding with it. Um, and I was really impressed by the, the pattern syntax, the way that you can express patterns in a very short, um, compact notation, and also the way you could then apply functions, uh, sort of functional transformations to those patterns. So anyway, this long story short, Super Collider, uh, sorry, Bacalao is um, something which I sort of tried to redo that because live coders and programmers in general, we like to reinvent the wheel. And so I um, wanted to write something that's similar to that, at least has similar syntax for the parsing of, of patterns, um, but in Super Collider. So it's, it's actually written in Super Collider language and it works very, very closely with Super Collider. So it, it, it uses things like the basic building, building blocks are patterns, synths or synth defs, and node proxy is sort of the underlying, node proxy is from a thing called JITLib, just in time lib library, which um, lets you very easily create sort of temporary <laughs> synthesizers or s audio generating things. And they may have effects on them. They may have um, different layers that are combining to make. Uh, it's, it's more or less designed for live coding because you can change things very quickly and cross fade between them and not have to worry about the low level kind of boilerplate. So that's kind of what Bacalao is doing too. Bacalao builds on top of those things uh, in my own 
in a way which is interesting to me. And I'm not sure if Backlog will be interesting to anyone else in terms of using it. I, I hope people would be interested in using it, but it's really my <laughs> playground, as I, as I call it, um, to explore live coding. And it's just sort of a passion project. I just enjoy working on that and adding new functionality. Um, so anyway, that's a lot of introduction. First of all, let's just sort of go through um, um, what it is, it's, it's publicly available. It's on GitHub. There's a, there's a repository called Bacalao under my account, total G slash Bacalao. And you can get it from there and just from within Super Collider. I'll show you that in a moment, how to actually install it. Um, just so just really quickly, I'll go up. I, I know one of the rules of, of um, giving a live presentation is that your, um, your if you have slides, these aren't slides, but if you have slides, you should have very, very small amount of text on each slide. So um, as you can see, I sort of, this is a, if this were a slide, it would be far too big. But just really quickly, I wanted to give sort of the key um, features that, that exist in Bacalao right now. So the first thing is a way of creating patterns that's basically very similar to the title cycles pattern notation. So I'll show you that in a bit. Um, so that's all what this is, just very similar. Well, it's better to show it than to describe it. Um, short forms of things. So um, in Super Collider, maybe I should just jump to some code here. Um, well, do I, do I need to explain what a event is? Um, so, Basically, super colliders patterns have um, are sort of two types. One is patterns, value patterns. So they're uh, they're presenting a single. Uh, it's a pattern. It's like a little machine or a little engine that produces a one value each time it's asked. Um, then there are event patterns, which are still little machines that generate events in this case or values. But those values are composite things that have parameters and values. So for example, it's kind of like MIDI notes. You have a, um, the, the frequency of the note or the, the MIDI note itself, like which key it is on the piano, maybe the, the volume and the duration and maybe some other parameters like panning or whatever. So that's what events are when I talk about event patterns. Um, so anyway, in, in Super Collider, these event patterns are just created uh, let's switch this here. So for example, this is an event in Super Collider. Oops, need to boot. Okay, that's an event which plays just default values, but I can say, um, I can play a certain frequency in Hertz. And I can add, you know, amplitude louder. And I can add, you know, panning to the left. Okay. So that's this is just obvious things if you know Super Collider. And if you don't, then it just it gives you a vague idea that an event is sort of a combination of, of values, um, of parameters with their values. So in, um, so switch back here. So I've got various things happening here. So anyway, the, the point is I have some short forms of these things. So I can use DEG instead of degree or ins instead of instrument. Um, that's just simple. Um, the next thing is, again, very much inspired by tidal cycles, which is the way you compose two different patterns. So I think I should, um, I guess I'll jump into showing actual things because Otherwise, you're just hearing me talk and it's not very interesting. So let's go to here. Okay, so let's just, I'll stop what I was saying for a moment and just quickly go over installing uh, Bacalao. When Super Collider, you use some plugins or extensions are called quarks. 
and um, you install them like the code you see here basically um, just a path to the the website the github website where bacalao lives um, then in order to use bacalao you just need to create an instance of the bacalao class like this and then you usually I, I always assign it to the variable b sort of a global variable called b and that's basically it so now i have this bacalao object and everything is done in terms of functions or methods on that on that object so what i was mentioning before about patterns this is kind of this is what i was talking about with uh, similar similarity to title cycles so in title cycles you would have something like um, um maybe like um, I don't know whatever something like this so basically you're you're, you're defining a, a pattern of notes 0246 and you're defining a pattern which tells it for example which synthesizer to play or which instrument to play um, and something like that. So in Bacalao, the equivalent is, it's, it's very similar. The notation is very similar. So you put the name of the parameter at the beginning. So in this case, degree, that's the degrees of, in this case, a major scale. So zero is middle C, two is up to, it's E and so on, G and then B. So if I play this, so I get those four notes played. They're played within one, sort of cycle or one unit of measure, which is, you could think of it as a bar. It doesn't have to be a bar in musical. We're not really trying to repeat classical music notation or that way of thinking, but um, it's useful to think of it that way. So there's, this is at the moment running within one second, because at the moment by default, one of those units is equal to one second. So as it says here, everything in quotes will fit into one unit of time. So if I just do two things, it'll be slower. The overall, the whole pattern is still one second. Here it's, if I have a whole bunch of notes, then they all fit within one second. So they become, in this case, case their eighth notes. <clears throat> so if I change the tempo so that it's twice as fast, it's sort of a normal um, rate, 120 beats per minute, assuming we have uh, four beats per bar. Um, then I can play things that are, in, I'll start using Bacalao here. Sorry, I'm just, I'm trying to think how to express this in a way which is sort of gets you there. Um, so first of all, there's a, a sort of a parser that's installed that just create, takes something like this, a little string, and it produces a pattern out of it. So if we, if you look, when I, when I execute this code over here in the post window, it actually shows you what it's done. It's created this P bind which is a kind of pattern, an event pattern. And it has a whole bunch of, um, well, it doesn't have a whole bunch. It has one parameter or one, one key degree. And then it, within that, it has two values, zero and four. So it plays first a zero, then it plays a four, it repeats it just once. And what's different here, as opposed to normal, normal pattern is it has one parameter plus a duration. So the duration here is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So half of a, bar for each of those. If I take this one, for example, you'll see that it goes from sequences through numbers zero to seven, and the durations are all one eighth of a, of a cycle. So that's just basic stuff. So I'm gonna, the most important command or method on, on the Bacalao object is called P, which could be like play or pattern. And you need to provide it the name of sort of a track. If you think of it in terms of uh, audio editing environments, it's like a track. It's like an, not exactly an instrument, but it's a sound entity, I guess. So I call it a track. And then you give it a pattern and then it'll play that pattern. In this case, it'll play it in a loop. So it'll just keep playing one, two, three, four. Okay. You can also tell it to play things just once, in 
which case it stops at the end, obviously. So then just to, I'll go really quickly through the notation because I think most people, at least here in Barcelona, in our in our live coding gang, <laughs> are are familiar with title cycles. So this is very basically the same syntax as title cycles. You have zero and one will take place within one beat. Then you have two as a beat by itself. Then you get two threes and you get three fours, four repeated three times within one beat. So that sounds like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And as I mentioned earlier, you can abbreviate these things. So D, E, G is the same as, as degree. <clears throat> so this is, I think, different from, I think from title cycles, I don't remember, but to extend the duration, you use an at sign. So it'll hold the zero four times longer than the five and seven. So that's a total of six sort of subunits within the, then it gets normalized. So within that bar, it's like six units. So it's two thirds of the time playing zero, then one third, um, or sorry, once, yeah, two thirds of that, and then one sixth, one sixth. So then you can use these brackets to subgroup sort of sub patterns. And then you can put this at sign to extend the whole pattern to last longer. Or you can do the same thing using kind of like bar lines, dividers that will split it up into four. So this, these two lines are equivalent. So if I play this one now, zero, two, two, four, 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 seven. So that's the same thing. It's just a notation thing. So I'm just gonna stop this. Okay. The other important thing about, um, or that was I found very interesting about tidal cycles was the way that it composes the durations, um, which is different from the way Super Collider normally works with its patterns when you compose two patterns together. So what um, tidal cycles would do, if we have two different things, let's call this like an, a note of zero, two, four, seven. And then we have an amp, I think it's called gain there. 0 0.4. Okay, this is just an easy one, but basically it takes this, for each of these notes on the left-hand side here, so a quarter, of a zero, a quarter of a two, a quarter of a four, and a quarter of a seven. For each of those events, it'll then look to the right, what's here, and it'll find the corresponding value at that time. So in this case, the, the value is the same. It's the same value for all time. So that's not very interesting. If I play this, all those notes get the amplitude of 0 0.4. Comment is wrong. You can also set an event if you prefer the, the traditional super collider notation. However, say here, for example, what's going to happen? I've got four events here in the first, in the degree key. And in the amp side, I've got two events. One's a 0 0.6 and one's a 0 0.1. But this one is held for three beats. So the first beat, the zero, gets louder. Zero, two, four, seven. Zero, two, four, seven. So they're loud and the next three are quiet. So that's just, again, quite simple if you know tidal cycles. And here is a bit more complicated example. So what it's doing here, it's playing these five quick zeros in one beat, then a two, then a four, then a seven. For the first half of the bar, so all the zeros and the two, you'll get a quieter sound, amplitude 0 0.3 out of one. And then for the last half of the bar, the, the four and the seven degree, you'll get a louder thing. And then meanwhile, I'll just stop this because it's kind of in the way. Meanwhile, in the pan, uh, left, right, minus one is left, one is right, it's actually going two times through minus one, one. So it's basically, this is equivalent to saying that basically, or that. 
So it, those are all exactly equivalent. There's no difference between them. Uh, it just it's it's playing f left, right, left, right. So each note has a different pan, and they're alternating between them. So, um, yeah. So that's <laughs> that's basically that. That's a simplified version of chaining. But it's if you know tidal cycles, it should make sense to you. If you know super collider, it may not make as much sense because we don't have something like. As far as I know, there's nothing like that, which is why I had to write a special um, time chaining pattern. In Super Collider, you have um, a chain operator, uh, which combines two, takes a pattern of events on the left side and then a, another pattern or an event on the right side. So it's very similar to this. And it looks like you just have a different way of writing it this way instead. And what it does, it takes for each, each time it gets called, it'll pull a new value from the right-hand side and put it to the left-hand side. But the left-hand side always wins out. So if you have the same thing repeated further to the left, it'll always win out. Um, but when you have alternating things, um, when you have alternating things, uh, they, they, have, they have no notion of time. They just pull the next value out. So um, that's why I had to basically write a special, instead of there's an existing P chain pattern, um, I wrote a, a thing I call P time chain pattern, which is very s analogous to P chain, but um, does it with knowledge of time. So it's actually um, taking the appropriate value as if those two things are playing independently and then just Whenever the note starts, if a note starts on the halfway through the bar, then look at what would be playing to the right of that halfway through the bar and take that value and then just hold it until your next event. So it, it's it, they, in tidal cycles, they use the term structure. The structure comes from the left. So um, you have other ways of doing it in tidal cycles where you can choose the structure from the right or from both sides. But um, in Bacalao for now, you only have the option of <laughs> structure from the left. So <clears throat> so if you put something further to the left than this degree here, um, say I put a pan here, what's going to happen is it's just going to play one note. I think. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> That's a special case. So what's happening here is it, at the beginning of the bar, it's needing a value. It's playing this pan zero. So it looks to the right, what should be playing at that time? Degree zero should be playing and amp 0 0.4 should be playing. So it plays those, but then there's no more duration information. So it just goes to the next bar. So you, you kind of lose all this other stuff. So that's, that's actually useful in some cases. And that's actually what you want in some cases, but you need to be aware of it because it um, can be sometimes confusing if you don't. If you're trying to do a specific thing, you might get confused by, by where the actual events are coming from, not the values, but the actual events. So just going quickly again through the notation, you have same as tidal cycles, you have alternation. So here I can play um, a sequence. What it's doing here is it's playing, the first time through it's playing zero, two, three, and then four. Next time it's playing the other value, one, two, three, and then it's playing five. And then this one repeats back to zero, two, three, then it goes to the third value here, seven. So we can see that if we, if we actually trace this, we can see here zero, two, three, four, one, two, three, five, zero, two, three, seven, one, two, three, four, and so on. So you can also repeat elements within the within the, the repetition, the alternation, sorry. So this is equivalent to doing this. Zero, one, one, one is the same as zero, one, repeated three times. In super collider one, repeated three times is an array of, of three values, three ones. So that's just a case where it's different from tidal cycles, but it's it makes sense if you're a super collider person. <laughs> Okay, so you can also do with these brackety things, you can do chords if you put commas instead of spaces. 
So there, it's playing zero and one at the same time, then two, then three, and then four, five, and seven all together. Then you have this notion of repeats, which is we've seen before with the asterisk, which means three zeros only in the space of one, and then a four in the space of one, and then another four. So it looks like this. One, two, three, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, and then here you can also put repetition or duplication on substructures. So here you have zero, two, repeated twice, and then four, seven, four or seven, alternating, duplicated twice. Okay, so you can build up complicated patterns, obviously, doing this. Um, so to the right in the comment, you can see this, what's the equivalent expanded out version of this, but basically it's like three times this bracket, and then all that is duplicated twice, and then an alternating four, and then eight, and then seven is duplicated twice. So then you have these things that are called Euclidean patterns. Um, in SuperCollider, they use the term Bjorklund, which is a reference to the algorithm that's used to try to space out a number of beats more or less uniformly throughout a fixed number of grid points. So for example, if you want to do three beats out of eight here, and then four beats, sorry, and then five beats out of eight with a bit of an offset, like a rotation. So you can, get, this is actually, when you start to get more sort of groovy kind of sounds, this is the way you do it often is with this kind of pattern, which sounds a bit more syncopated or a bit more, more interesting basically. see the difference here between the zero uh, repeated with a, with a Euclidean pattern or the zero duplicated with the Euclidean pattern. So in this case you have all these zeros will have the same weight, <coughs> excuse me, the same weight as one of these beats in this section. Whereas in this uh, re repeating case, all this stuff here will be within one beat. So all this will be equivalent of this minus seven in duration. And then what's this showing? This is just showing. So this is really where you start to get quite a bit of complexity just from um, exploring these different building blocks of, of the pattern notation. So something which is different from, from tidal cycles is um, the notion of sort of variables because you're in you're inside super collider so you have you can have knowledge of the current scope or the current environment so what we can do is we can set some variables so i'll set a variable called sd which could be let me just so i'll set a variable called sd which i just did with a value of 61. Uh, we can imagine this would be like a a snare a snare drum key in a in a sampler a midi sampler uh, that would be playing uh, a, snare, a snare drum on note 61 which is um, c sharp above middle c then um, i can play this pattern so if i can make make up a pattern with a midi note so it's going to play midi note 61 four times in a row so okay so that's not very exciting but there it is then I can define a variable which is called BD, in this case, like bass drum, but it might have several values. It might have an array of values here. So if I set that, I actually now, because the, the variables in Bacalao are also mapped sort of, or set as the current environment, this is also the same thing as just a normal uh, super collider environment variable. So BD is that and SD is that right now. So. 
Um, so now if I play, when it has an array, like this, this BD has four values in it, when I play it once. So it plays first. When you don't put any indexing, it just plays the first note, the 47 in that array. And then you can index by doing a colon and then three. So then it'll play the, the index three, which is the fourth element in that. So 47, 60. You can see here the numbers being printed out. It's playing MIDI note 47 and then MIDI note 60. And then over here, if I, if I put index one, it should play 48. And then if I put a colon R, which is something different, then it will just randomly pick one of those arrays each time it runs. So, so here I played 48 and then 59. If I play it again, I played 48 twice. Played 48, 47, so you get the idea. It just randomly picks one of those. If I had that four times, it would be different each time, possibly. Okay. I can also define um, an array of arrays. So that would be like a chord. So this is, my variable is an array which has some values in it, but those values are themselves arrays. So when you have an array in an event pattern in Super Collider, that means it's a chord. It, it gets expanded out into several um, synthesizers uh, being spawned or being created to play those notes. So it'll actually create four different um, synths to play that. So here I can play the first chord and then the second chord by doing chord, chord one. Okay. I mean, I say chord, it could be any anything. It's just an arbitrary collection of numbers. It can be musically meaningful or not, according to your, to your whim. Um, I can then also do the same thing. I can play a value zero and then play a chord value with a random choice. So it'd be different each time. Okay. So then the thing is, that, that's something which is quite interesting um, to play with these variables from the, from the environment. Um, another thing I haven't actually mentioned here, but which is interesting is that the, these variables get looked up. First of all, they get looked up in the current environment, which means sort of there's a thing called current environment in Super Collider, which is uh, a dictionary that has keys, which are the variable names and their values. So when you have that, when you have a dictionary set as the current environment, then you can use this little magical tilde notation to look up those keys. Um, but you also can use with Baclau, you can also use non um, not those variables, but global variables of other, or local or global variables of other kinds. So for example, I could have a variable called B, oh, no, that's not B, <laughs> danger, danger, don't call it B. Um, I could have whatever, something here, and I could play that too. Oops, except I don't want to play, haha. <laughs> These are supposed to be degrees. So 66 is a very, 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 very high note. So luckily I have a limiter on because otherwise you would have blasted your ears there. So I'll play 14. Okay, so you get the idea. It could also be a, an array. Um, oops. Theoretically, it should be looking up different values, but maybe not, maybe not. I'm not sure why not. Anyway, um, so the other type of variables you can define are dictionaries themselves. So here we had a, a single value, like BD was, was a, just a number. Oops. Um, sorry, SD, SD was a number and BD was, a, was a, a, an array of values. Instead of that, you can use a dictionary. So a dictionary is a thing that has keys, named keys, and then it has values. So if I define, for example, a low note and a high note, 
um, then I can play that by using this notation. I could say MIDI note, and then put right, right in the in the pattern, put tilde dictionary one or dict one, which is the name of my my dictionary, and then I can use those names directly in here. So I can put low, high, like that. So it's playing 48, and then the high note is either 50 or 51. So I'll define a different dictionary, which has 60, and then three to three values. Okay. So this is actually pretty powerful. And the thing that's good about these kind of using dictionaries versus just regular variables, I mean, regular variables could look up dynamically or live, but they don't for, for various reasons. But dictionaries do look up live. So if I change one of these values, so now the value called low is got has gone up by one note. So I can Okay. I could also set it to a random value. Each time I execute the code, it will pick a, a number between 55 and 65. Okay, or, this is quite interesting, I can set the value low to a function that will get called and that will do something. So in this case, it will return a random value and that means that each time it gets called, that low value is going to be chosen randomly between 55 and 65. And then back to the variables thing, which is part of the power of working within Super Collider as opposed to being an external program. And you get you get the benefit of all kinds of built-in functionality and don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, I can create a pattern, for example, like a, a P Brown is kind of like a wandering uh, random walk between 50 and 60 and set that value as the low value. So every time low gets called, it either goes up or down by a step or stays the same. And here I've got it printing out just for debugging. And I can do the same thing to the high value. Okay. And reset them to something different. I can stop the pattern like this by setting it, the pattern itself to nil, which is sort of nothing. Um, or I can do what's more typically you would do is call clear on the pattern. Um, or I can clear all tracks here, or I can just do hush, which will clear all tracks. These two are the same thing. So, And these clear functions, these functions take a, a fade time too. So if you put in a longer time, you can have it fade out over 20 seconds if you want to, or have it cut immediately. Uh, the default, I think, is to fade out by, by two seconds, or over two seconds. So it's 8.45. <laughs> um, as I suspected, I, I'm going... There's so much stuff to show you that I... But I, I, I sort of... I guess it, it'll require more than one session, probably. Um, so let's just see where we are here. We've gone through sort of short forms, time chaining patterns, looped or one-time patterns. Okay. We've done some other things too to do with... Um, so I think I should probably... Let's just see what's most important. This is most similar to tidal cycles where you can use samples uh, or use audio files uh, as your instruments, basically. So you can play them as, as sort of... Yeah, as samples. So you can tune them up and down and so on. So I guess I'll show that Next, uh, if I go just to, um, do I have it in this file somewhere here? Okay, so this is the section playing samples and buffers. So I've still got my my bacalao running here. By the way, just a quick digression here. If I go back to for a moment. Um, 
one thing I always find interesting is etymology. So why, why did I call this bacalao? Um, well, I mean, the, the main obvious reason, or maybe not obvious reason, but the main reason is because what is bacalao? Bacalao is a fish. It's an Atlantic fish. Um, in English, it's called cod. And cod is, you know, kind of vaguely similar to code. <laughs> so um, basically, uh, it also has the words of uh, the, the letters of Barcelona in it, more or less, not quite in order, but it has like two thirds of the letters of Barcelona. And I can make lots of jokes to do with fish. I can have live cod or love code or live code or whatever, all kinds of salty examples. So, and also it turns out that uh, I didn't know this originally. I mean, I knew it very shortly after choosing bacalao. Um, but there, there is a name of music, a, a style of music that was very popular, or at least it was with some people very popular in Spain in the 1980s, mainly. Um, sort of an aggressive dance, kind of electronic music style. Um, so this is not the reason why I called it bacalao. Um, that bacalao was written in different ways with a K or with a V or maybe sometimes in the traditional bacalao spelling. But um, that's that's not the reason why I chose the name bacalao. Although Spanish people uh, or Catalan people or Valencian people will tend to think that uh, that's the first association they will have. If it's music and it's bacalao, it's probably that. So you could make bacalao music with, with my bacalao, um, but generally speaking, I probably wouldn't choose to, but there it is. So back to these buffers. Um, let me just switch back to the code window. So in Super Collider, there is the sound that's always used as example. So there's a method, method on bacalao called load buffer, which just takes a path to a file and then it loads that file. And this file is the, the standard. So if you are a super clutter user, you know that sample. It's like the only example file that comes with comes with super collider. So it's used in many examples. Um, so there's this function called chop, which takes a, a buffer. This is when I loaded that in, it became a variable in the local scope called with a name that I can give or just the name based on the, the, the file's name. And then you can chop it up into a number of pieces and you can change its r rate of playback. For example, here I've changed it. When I play it by default, it'll play it over two bars and it will then adjust the speed of playback a little bit to make it fit exactly so it doesn't there's no gaps left or no overlaps in those chunks being played. So it's sped it up by 7% in order to play it. But I can tell it to go still two bars, but play at the original speed. That's the original speed. And actually now there'll be a little bit of overlap, but you can't really hear it because it's a small difference. So dB means set the, de the decibel level of this track to plus six. So just raise the volume. Now what we can do, we have this pattern. It's just a, a regular pattern. This B dot chop just creates a pattern, a P bind, which is a sequence of, in this case, 16 little fragments, which can be done, which can have things done to them. So I can reverse them. So over two bars, it's playing backwards now. And then I can start to show you a bit of more expressive stuff here. So here I'm going to chop it up, play it fast or play it over one bar. So it's going to be um, quite a bit faster than twice as fast and backwards. But then every fourth bar, just scramble the order of the pieces. So 
Here comes. Three. Scramble. Yeah. And the scramble has a, a a seed, a random seed number. If you if you put that, then it'll be the same every time it scrambles. If you don't put that, it'll be different every time. So all the sort of randomization type um, functions are are done using um, they all have seeds so you can make them repeatable if you want that um, something else i should dis discuss here probably is uh, since this is sort of i just all of a sudden showed you something i hadn't shown before um, this as i said this b.chop just produces a, a pattern an event pattern which is in super collider called a p bind a, a bound together a pattern that binds together a bunch of values and their parameters with values into one event pattern. Um, and then I've added, there are some existing func or methods you can call on patterns. So uh, for example, there's one called repeat and there's one called stutter, which are just the equivalents of just doing, there's always a, a matching um, class. P stutter is just repeats the same, it gets an event and then it repeats it several times until it gets the next event. So it kind of, yeah, well, stutters, I guess would be the right word for that. Um, I've added a bunch of other ones. There's, um, for example, reverse, which we saw, which is quite obvious. It just plays it backwards. Again, this is not something which is easy to do in Super Collider or it's not really intended because you don't normally have awareness of the whole pattern. This is why it was difficult to try to implement this in, in Super Collider. In Tidal, um, you, they have the whole knowledge of like a bar or a, a cycle, and then they can do whatever they want functionally on those little pieces that make up that cycle. In Super Collider, everything is kind of handed out one bit at a time. So you get this piece of the pattern, next piece of the pattern, next piece of the pattern. You don't have the big picture. So it makes it hard to do things like if you want to reverse it, you need to basically run ahead and capture all the events up to a certain point, like one bar or whatever you want to call it, one cycle, and then play sort of buffer those and then play them backwards. So it's, it's kind of, it also required some special um, different new classes I created in order to apply these kind of time manipulation things on, on patterns. Um, and same thing for something like scramble, because you need to have a, you need to know what you're scrambling. You can't scramble against the event 10, 10 bits from now. If you haven't seen it yet, you have to know it's there in order to be able to shuffle things around. So you kind of need to convert it from a, a generic machine that just generates a value when you ask for a value into kind of like an array or something which can then be scrambled. And um, so I, what I used as a reference here was there, there are, these are existing functions and in, in Super Collider, if I make a, a sequence like, uh, this makes an array from zero to seven. There's already an existing um, method on, on the array that's called scramble, which just randomly shuffles the, the pieces. Same thing for reverse is a, you know, it reverses the, the order of that array. So th I, I kept the notation the same. So everything, if you know Super Collider is, is familiar to you. So um, this is an interesting thing also, you can print out what you have. I mean, you, you could do it yourself, but I made some helpers. I, I'm always just making helpers because I'm trying to do things for live coding. So in live coding, you're trying to <laughs> respond quickly and create things quickly. And with Super Collider, it's not easy to always get access to things or it it's more verbose. And I mean, Bacalao is still more verbose than some other live coding environments. Um, and it's still hard to do certain things like build up more complicated structures that then change from a whole bunch of things happening at once to a whole bunch of other things, you have to really kind of, if you're trying to do it from scratch, if you're, if you're preparing things ahead of time, that's fine. But if you're trying to really kind of improvise, you want to make it as expressive as possible and quick to be able to do things with not much writing of code. But uh, so anyway, so even just things like printing out variables, that's here, at least you can do var print and that will tell you what you've got currently got defined. So we see we've got like, um, we'll see that BD for, 
and SD are those variables we defined earlier. Um, there's some other ones that are predefined. And then we also see buffers. So there's the buffer that's there, which is the one we loaded just now. So something I added just recently was um, this little helper just to, to make it easier for you to work with samples because something like Tidal Cycles has a whole library, which by default it loads in, <coughs> excuse me, it loads in maybe, you know, 500 megabytes of samples or something at the beginning in, in the super dirt. It's called super dirt is there the, the super collider part of that. So the super dirt library has a bunch of default things like, you know, 808 drums and, and all kinds of samples, alphabet samples, number samples. So, um, and you can also define your own. You just put a bunch of files into a directory, audio files in a directory, like wave, wave files or AIFF files. And then uh, that directory sort of becomes like an instrument or a, which has a bunch of sort of sub samples inside it. So I wanted to kind of make it that easy without having to load a default library necessarily. You could do that. Um, but for example, if you want to feel more at home, sorry, I'm speaking quickly. If you want to feel more at home, um, with, if you're a Tidal Cycles user, you can open up the dirt samples. So, um, well, you're not, you don't see this here, but I've got that command I just ran opened up a, a file explorer with all the, the samples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in, say, for example, this 808 directory. So I'm just going to drag this onto this sample drop, oops, window. So if you can see that, it says loaded in 808 as tilde sample.808. Maybe I'll also load in BD. Now notice we already have a BD, but it's gonna replace that variable, hopefully. Okay. So that's done that. I'm gonna close this for now. So it, we can see that it has loaded in eight different samples for um, the 808. And what those are is basically they're just events that tell instrument, which is which synth to use. It's called sample one because it's a mono audio file. The length is 1.5 seconds. The buffer, the super collider buffer to play and the start time is zero. So, so now um, I will just play that. So if I do this, so it's playing the first of those instruments in the, or samples in the 808 folder four times in a row. So, so this should start sounding familiar to Tidal Cycles users. Now, just a quick note here, this, the way you do this is with this at sign. So normally you do, you know, degree zero two four whatever that becomes a pattern which is a, a de degree pattern or it could be a, a midi note pa pattern or it could be a, any of those sort of single value parameters that have a single value plus duration structure but when you use the at sign you're saying i, I don't know it's not any one um type of one key or one parameter it could be it's an event which contains multiple parameters so our our sample directory if we look here oops sorry like 808 has a bunch of events in it which have multiple they have instrument they have length they have buff so when you do at samp like this what that does is that will tell it to look up um, in the in the very the dictionary called samp tilde samp, and then when it finds a name called 808, it'll use those values. Not sure if that's very well explained. Okay. So then I also loaded in the the BD sample. So I'll play that. So it's randomly picking one of those many, many samples in that directory each time it plays. Okay. OK, 
Okay, or we could load in. Let's just load in this numbers directory too quickly. Okay, I'm scrolling through the file browser here to find numbers. And I'm going to, oops, drag it in as a samples. Okay. Zero, two. Zero, four, zero, two, now two, it's playing. Zero, Always four, zero. Then either zero, two or four, two, alternating. Zero, four, and then it's playing seven, either nothing, zero, two, twice, zero, and then four, once every three times, zero, it's playing two, eight, a random zero, number. Four, zero, two, zero, four, eight, zero, two, zero, okay, four, and then you, zero, because they're just samples, you can also seven, adjust their zero, speed. Four, just like zero, in Super Collider, two, using the N zero, or four, note, six, you can zero, do the same thing two, here. Six, five, zero, it's picking random zero, numbers, four, zero, and seven, it's playing them at different four, frequencies, one, basically changing the speed zero, of playback five, to make them a little bit. Six, five, four, eight, seven, zero, four, one, seven, eight, four, three, zero, five, seven, seven, seven the reason that's so low is because every now and then we get a minus 28, which is a very, very low, like two and a half octaves down from the normal speed. So it's playing a, a quarter of the speed or a bit less than a quarter of the speed. Okay, so it's now 9.05, so we've been going for about an hour here. Let me just switch back for a moment. We probably don't want to go too much longer because I've heard that people's attention spans um, are not infinite, so I hear. So go to slides. So the other... Ugh, there's so much stuff to show. I guess one of the main things I should show, because one of the things that I was most interested in for many years, and you couldn't do in Super Collider, was loading VST plugins. So just really briefly, VST plugins are um, external plugins that are supported. Like basically any you know software synth that you buy um, is a VST plugin, or it could be effects or whatever. So there are free ones available, there are commercial ones available, and they're obviously very, very rich. It, it's a lot of fun and it's really, really a good challenge and um, a, a whole art in itself to, to try to do everything yourself and to build um, in Super Collider your own synths, your own audio processing that does something really interesting and innovative or just that you like. Um, but sometimes you want to have something just easy to play. So you could have a, a MIDI synthesizer, which you just send it MIDI notes, which you could also do. Um, and you can do that from Super Collider. You can do that from Tidal Cycles. But um, what I was interested in was having VST instruments within Super Collider. So then you could use all the Super Collider stuff on top of that. So for example, you could start to do effects in Super Collider that you've written on top of existing audio without having to fiddle with piping things back and forth between applications, which is hard on some on some platforms. Um, and also just inconvenient. So luckily there was a, a, th uh, a plugin, a, a super collider extension that was developed at the IEM in Austria. Um, and in the last year, roughly less about a year ago started and it does exactly that. So it lets you load VST plugins in Super Collider and play them and play with them. So this made me pretty excited. And this is, it's, it's actually not hard to use, but again, it's, it's a question of sort of how much do you have to write in order to get a quick result. So um, I've kind of incorporated that plugin. If you have it installed, it'll use it. If not, you just can't do that part of, of Super Collider. But um, let me just, I'll just do a quick example of this and then that'll probably be it for today. Um, sorry, let me switch back here. 
so that can super clever. Oops. So the extension is called VST plugin. It's available here at this uh, IEM, their own um, Git repository. And it's not a quark. You have to actually download it, the, the zip file or whatever, and then extract it into your, basically, oops. Ah. Sorry. You have to extract it into this directory. If you run this, this line, it'll open up a, a file explorer, and then you can just copy it straight into there and reboot Super Collider, and you're good to go. So it's different. It works on, for sure, Windows and for sure Mac. And I believe it, no, it also works on Linux. Um, I haven't worked on Linux with it, but I have on both Windows and Mac. So what you can do is, first of all, whatever you have installed, you can run VST print, print instruments, and it'll go and scan. If it, the first time you run it, it'll scan your disk first off. It'll take longer. But once you've done that, um, you can then see a whole list of things, all, all your VST instruments, for example, that you've got installed. So um, I've got, for example, some from Native Instruments, and I've got some from uh, Arturia, and some from Applied Acoustics, which are all pretty interesting. And there are some, some free ones, like Helm is actually a, a good one to, if you wanted to just explore things without spending money initially, um, you can just try that. It's open source and pay by, by donation. So um, anyway, once you've, you've, you've seen the list of things, if you know the name, <coughs> excuse me, if you know the name of what you're trying to do, then you just do VST in it and give it the name of the, the VST plugin. So that's it, it's loaded it. And now if I play it, just one second. So if I play a pattern with this, it doesn't sound very interesting, but that's the default configuration of this FM8 synth or VST plugin. So if I, I can now run this b.vst will give me a, a, a structure which is not part of Bacalao, it's part of the VST plugin. Um, so you just run that and then run .editor and that will open up interface. You're not seeing it because <clears throat> okay. okay, so there's the interface. So now I can go and choose, you know, choose you can use the interface normally and switch between things you can actually can play it you can play the keyboard normally you can adjust pitch band and so on okay and Once you've done that, you can actually then uh, save a preset of that, and that will save it in somewhere local to your machine, and you can then reload it in the future by just calling the name of the preset like that. So that's, you basically have to sort of define your own presets if you don't want to have to open the editor. And like for a live coding session, I always have prepared what I want to use during the session. And the other just thing to talk about for these is that normally they're different from super colliders, normal um, synths because, or 
under, under the hood, it's a, it's a node proxy. So there's a, a proxy object which is playing a pattern. And that pattern is then creating little synths, one for each note normally. And those notes are playing on the, on the proxy, which can have effects and different things on it. But basically, there's no long running thing. It's just each note has its own synth that's spawned, plays its note, and then goes away. So if you play a chord, you have three notes. There's three synths running at the same time, and then they go away whenever they want to. So with the VSD plugin, VSD plugins take some time to load. There's sort of overhead. And so it's not a real time process. When you load it, it might take half second to load or something like that. So you can't interrupt uh, the Super Collider server that's generating audio. So uh, you can't spawn. The point is you can't spawn a new instance of the plugin for each node. So the way it works is that we create one synth that's just running always quietly in the background, and then it gets sent the events. Um, so that's the difference between VST type tracks in Bacalao and just regular Super Collider synth tracks. Um, so let's just... So basically, normally you, you could set notes however you want to, using a MIDI note here, or you could use degrees, or you could use frequencies directly. You can use whatever you want to set the notes to or to play on the VST plugin. <clears throat> and things like amp, which obviously amp is not normally a parameter used by those VST plugins, but it gets translated into the equivalent. So the equivalent is usually a MIDI velocity between 0 and 127. So, but that's all handled behind the scenes. So you just set the amp and it just plays it louder or quieter accordingly. Um, and what I was saying is that when you, when you clear what's playing, so over four seconds, it's gonna fade that out. Um, in the case of clear with VST tracks, it doesn't actually remove the synth. The, the one that's running the plugin is still there and it keeps on running. So it's ready to go. If I wanna play again, it just, comes right back up and nothing's happened. If you really want to get rid of it, if you don't want to use that track anymore at all, you should call free, which is a clear, but then it also will get rid of the, the synth. So this will really kill it. Okay, that really gets rid of it. And you see the, uh, the interface went away and stuff too, because that has been completely removed from memory. So now once I've done that, that piano track doesn't exist anymore. If I play something else on there, It'll just be a default super collider thing. It won't be a nice VST plugin sound anymore. So, um, just really, really briefly, the other thing I'll mention um, before wrapping it up is effects. So, um, you can apply effects like filters, audio filters on on any kind of track, so in, in, in Bacalao. So they can be regular Super Collider tracks, like we showed most of the time today, or these, these VST instruments, same thing. So if I, I'll just reload this FM8 again. Uh, did that work? No, it didn't work. Oops. So I'll play this again. So what I could do is just quickly, I could apply these effects, <clears throat> which is just a, a, a super collider audio function that takes an input and does something to it. So it's called a filter in the node proxy world. So another thing I haven't really talked about is the fact that you have these sort of slots, different indices you can use within one track. So we, up here we have the piano track. Then we have something called piano arrow one, which is like a second slot track. The first one is on, on slot zero. Next one's on slot one. I can have any number of, of slots and they can have any index you want. 
and they can be playing patterns, so playing note patterns, or they can be playing effects, which are audio processing. So let's say on slot 10, arbitrarily, I have to not use zero or one because they're being used right now. Um, I'm going to play um, an effect. So let's say, for example, so delay dub is a nice one. And then I can, how wet I want it, so whether I want it to be, um, how much. Okay, now you will hear, if you notice. There's like an echo that's happening, sort of left and right. And these, um, These effects have a bunch of parameters on them. You can see here slot 10 is the, the delay dub effect and it has all these parameters that are exposed. So what I can do is I can go and change these. So on the piano track, I can set, for example, delay feedback, which is currently at 0 0.5 default. I can bring it up to 0 0.8, for example, and that will make a lot more feedback. So. It, it's going to keep on repeating for a lot longer. I can make it really extreme. And then I can start to do like... Bring in some wobble, which is very small, but it's a bit of... It'll start to change the, the pitch of the, the echoes. So they start to get kind of distorted. And all these things, all these parameters, I'm not gonna show you that today, but all these parameters can be patterned. You can, rather than just setting the value with a set, I can actually do a pattern to set them. So they'll be, um, I'll just show you briefly. So for example, I'll make one that's applying to the delayed pre. So what I'll do is only on the first note, I'll make it really take effect. And after that, I will have it not not apply the the wobble effect or the the the, the d delay effect. So let's start this again. So here it's only taking the first event out of four in a bar, and using that part for the echo and not. The rest of it is not echoing at all. It's just feeding zero to the to the effect. So anyway, there's a whole bunch of effects you can use, you can explore. And you can also do things like, um, of track 20 which is of slot 20 which is where the reverb is so right now it's at zero I'm going to gradually bring it up so we hear more and more of the of the reverb until we have only reverb
Okay, so that's probably a good place to leave it. Um, there's a lot more stuff. Um, just briefly, I think I covered most of the stuff I wanted. I wanted to show a lot more stuff, but it just doesn't fit in the time. You can also do character patterns. Anyway, the best thing to do would be to install it and open this Bacalao examples file, which is in the root directory of the repository of the, the quark when you install it. And then just start going through this. Is, there's not really documentation. There is some documentation for Bacalao, which is just the very basic <laughs> start point. Oops. But it doesn't actually give you much useful help and it's kind of a bit out of date. So as it says here, the best thing to do is to look for the cheat sheet. There's two cheat sheets that give sort of all the commands in a quick just just so you know what to look for after that you can start digging and trying them out it doesn't give you how to use them um, and then open this backlog examples file and start executing code and trying things out and letting me know so if i go here to the the cheat sheet uh, this is page one of two and there's, there's two pages but it gives you just the quick summary of all the basic stuff here's all the effects you can apply here's um all the commands related to VST plugins. Here's a quick summary of pattern parsing. And if I go to the second page of the cheat sheet, here's some other helper classes, which I haven't even gone into at all. Um, then all these filters, which are kind of effects for patterns that manipulate patterns in a sort of functional notation. And you can also do functional composition like this to apply several things at once. Um, and the, the abbreviations and baking, and then there's also binaural spatialization, which I didn't even plan to try to get to today, but um, that's a whole other sort of experimental thing, which I've played with in, in some live coding a, a few months ago. So I think that's where I'm gonna leave it for today. Um, I hope somebody has been out there listening. I'm not sure if it's actually been working, but uh, I don't see much comments on the, on the YouTube. But um, anyway, I hope it's been useful. If you're interested in, in learning more about it, you can get in touch with me. Um, I'm total G T O T A L G E E, uh, on, on, uh, well, GitHub on sccsynth.org, um, lots of places. So, um, anyway, I hope it's been helpful. I hope it's been useful and we'll talk to you next time. But I need to.